Welcome to Before the Bell, your home for actionable pre-market content. Good morning, traders. This is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, February 24th. It is 6.51 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run the video at 1.5x. Okay, uh, so Darth Vader over in Russia decided to... Uh, upscale his attack on the Ukraine that has uh, markets roiled and there was some overnight selling. Now futures are bouncing around quite a bit, but uh, as I'm starting the video, uh, large caps down two and a half percent, small caps two and a half percent as well. NASDAQ a little worse, three percent. Gold and silver are up three and a quarter percent. Bitcoin is down seven percent oil is up seven percent now we do have some macro things today you know jobless claims uh there's some earnings but i really think uh you know any of those events are going to be overridden so for the sake of time i'm just going to skip that this morning and uh, you can find those events on the uh, blog site both the earnings calendar and the uh, macro events if you care to look at it um, <clears throat> what I want to do first before I get into the charts is to give you some reminders on technical trading because in situations like this fundamentals are totally out the window everybody is going level to level it's the only way that you can trade it so what I want to do for you now is just review our trading principles because on a day like today they are really going to come to the forefront so uh, let's go through it quickly before the open what i want you to do is mark the lows on the indexes i'd also if you can mark them on the futures plus any stock that you're trading you know if you're an apple mark that uh, pre-market low. Why? Because uh, as we've said before, and actually it happened the other day, that regardless of any pre-market bounce that we may see, price has a way of revalidating those lows in the open session. So while you could see you know, a pre-market rally, when they fade that rally, they're going to go right back down to the pre-market lows at least for a test and then if they break those lows it'll bring in more selling so here on the uh here on the charts i see i got an error right here that should be 13025 but es nq rty i've also got the levels on spy the overnight lows 410 for 317.80 on Qs and 187.75 on small caps. Also, at the same time, once the market opens, you can mark the opening gap on all your stocks, indexes, futures, whatever you're trading. Mark that. And uh, of course, we closed on the lows yesterday so really the top of the gap is going to be defined by the closing price last night and then the open is going to be whatever it is and uh, you know in this kind of market you you've really got to be ready for anything for instance they run up and try to fill that gap out of the gate that would be a big big move you know, you're talking a 3% run up just to fill a gap, uh, you know, technically possible. We've seen it happen on smaller gaps. I wouldn't expect that, but you got to be ready. So if you get a gap entry and you want to tactically trade that, you can be long against the bottom of the gap, wherever the, you know, the opening of the day happens to be. And then if you're short a bunch of stuff, then that long will effectively be a hedge against your short book. So the only thing that would kind of scare me off 
is if they just if they took it green after being you know down so much overnight that would uh, that would give me pause for sure but what you're really looking at is the uh, lows if there's some kind of a panic sell-off and the overnight lows are breached then we had lower uh, already talked about this uh, be ready for anything now it's expected today that there's going to be another announcement about the next regime of sanctions and if they go you know draconian you know ban exports uh, kick Russia out of the uh, swift banking system those would be uh, really heavy-handed probably merited but the eurozone doesn't want to see that so we're going to have to see exactly what those sanctions might be roll and protect your positions don't get too far out of your over your skis on your short exposure and as we move down you can do one of two things and i, I haven't gone over this before but i want to do it now because it's something that occurred to me actually this morning one of the things you can do is is simply roll down your puts. so if you're at 50 and we open the day at 42 you can close those out and then buy 40s or buy 42s for a move lower another thing that you can do is wait until you think it's near a bottom and then spread your position what do i mean by that so if you were say you had 50 strike puts and it moves down to 42 and you think that there's you know limited downside at that level you can buy you know 38s or 40s whatever you you know where you think it's going to be because the vix is north of 37 as i'm speaking right now so the implied volatility for those puts is going to be very high because they're in demand so what you can do you may be able to sell you know that 40 or 38 strike put for the same price that you bought your original position now you'll just have to see what it is on on any particular stock that you're trading all i'm saying is that those downside puts are going to be really expensive and by spreading your position that'll be a backdoor way of uh, taking some profits taking some potential uh, uh, off the table because then your your downside will be capped if the market proceeds lower and blows through that lower strike uh, if I've made myself clear um, write down your plan it doesn't have to be fancy just bullet point it for the stocks that you're trading I want to do this at this level I want to do that at that level because once things get really rolling uh, there's a likelihood or propensity to kind of get discombobulated with everything that's going on so having that playbook written down uh, will really help you get refocused on what's important for those particular uh, tickers also today I know it's really tempting to you know what's everybody doing on Twitter and you know what are the developments in the Ukraine and have the radio or the TV on stuff like that I guarantee you that you will see any developments in Ukraine in like a millisecond on your charts way before Twitter sees it way before you know the president talks about it or there's a news flash you're gonna see it in the charts so what I recommend when things are crazy reduce your distractions stay focused um, give your complete attention to the charts 
Also, I would stick to the tickers that you know. Uh, I think familiarity with things when it gets like this is all important. You know, you're going to see, oh my God, uh, you know, aluminum is skyrocketing. Well, it already skyrocketed. Now you're making a bet that it's going to go even higher with a gap, you know, below when it gap opens. So that's not going to be a really strong position to, you know, take at this time. The time for that was, you know, two days ago or two weeks ago. So I, I would caution you on trying to chase things when the implied volatility is so high and you know things are running fast don't don't go all over the board that's just going to dilute your efforts on the tickers that you do know so let's get into the charts very quickly um i'm going to go through a couple of new charts i know we did a review last night i will go through that again very quickly for any new uh, visitors to the channel uh, if you want a more complete rundown of targets and such on uh, the indexes, fat man names, and art names, I highly suggest that you watch the Market on Close video that I posted last night after the bell. I will do a quick review of them now, though. So keep an eye on the VIX. Like I said, we're north of 37 right now. That prior high back in uh, the January sell-off was up in the 39 area. We may see, a, you know, a real panic set in, not predicting that. I'm just saying when you see that VIX really spike up, sometimes that can mark and, uh, you know, a short-term low. One thing I'll be watching for you, I don't expect you to have this chart, but if you want to replicate it, by all means, I think it's a good one to have. It's watching for the volatility term inversion. And you can see here uh, when uh, these levels coincide into the deep fear zone, it's done a pretty good job of identifying uh, short-term bottoms. So today, what I'll be watching for is a big volatility term inversion that coincides with technical support in the charts, which could mark a level where, okay, they try to bounce it right here. So if I see that, I will certainly pass that along. Uh, like I said, it's been a pretty darn good predictor of these lows if you go back in time. Now, one place that it didn't really work or gave you an early signal was in COVID where, you know, the whole thing just waterfalled. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but you got to take everything in context. I would use this type of an indicator uh, in conjunction with the charts. For instance, you get a vol term inversion, but price is crashing through support levels. I'm usually going to defer to price rather than an indicator because oversold indicators can get more oversold. So your number one thing on your charts is going to be your lower lower support levels and then you can ratchet down your stops as you proceed taking a look at the oscillators of course they moved down yesterday but not nearly oversold we were down at uh, 90 on our last cycle back in uh, february so this could easily move down into that range uh, same thing on the NASDAQ. We're down here at minus 44. We were down at minus 90 just about a month ago. So uh, they can get, you know, blown out 
to the downside, especially when you've got uh, you know macro events overriding uh, fundamentals like we have now. Uh, you'll see a big jump in gold this morning. You're going to see a jump in uh, GDX. What I want you to uh, home in on is, well, if you're long already, you're in the catbird seat. If we get a big gap up, I would watch it closely. Or if you want to take a, you know, a small long, that would be one area where, uh, I mean, we've been talking about gold getting exposure. Obviously, yesterday would have been better than today on the miners. But if you wanted to take a shot at that, that was one of the few uh, stocks that uh, I would endorse uh, taking a small shot on uh, with the idea that regardless of whether tensions in Ukraine settle down, we've still got a falling real rate environment and that should be bullish for gold and I would expect uh, GDX to follow. Another thing that we're long is grains, uh, corn and wheat and actually all of them, all the, all the grains are limit up today on the Chicago exchange. So you're going to see a jump in DBA. I've zoomed out to the monthly chart where you can see there's a high volume over price bar right at 24. That would be my target because probably what's going to happen is, you know, there'll be a limit up today. They impose their sanctions. Then it'll be a limit up tomorrow as well. And then we'll just have to see, you know, where it peters out if it does. But remember, we're on a bull run regardless of Ukraine. That's just been, you know, fuel to the fire or steroids, if you will. And, you know, all the fertilizer prices are going up and then all that's going to roll into, um, you know, your commodity prices as well. And while I'm on commodities... I mean, everything, you know, aluminum, copper, uh, maybe not iron ore, but palladium, platinum, all that kind of stuff. Russia is a major exporter of uh, even coal. Uh, I mentioned last night that our, our BTU had a secondary offering and knocked the stock down about two bucks. They've already bought back over half of that uh, this morning in the pre-market. So maybe we will uh, not be hurt too bad by that. It's disappointing to see, but whatever, it happens. So I don't plan on closing that out. I'm at least going to watch it and see what happens. Uh, moving on to SPY, just going to work on the daily charts here as a review to last night. We've got a put wall down at 405. That's my target for this run. Uh, I would be anticipating a bounce there. And if I were short, that would be a place to at least begin to scale out of uh, puts or to sell strikes below. You could try looking at the premiums on say like a 400 and that way uh, you can protect yourself from a bounce and then what you can do say we come down here to 405 you sell the 400 we get a bounce the value of that 400 put is going to go down then you can buy it back for another leg down once the bounce has petered out. Now, a lot of that strategy depends on, you know, what your strike is, you know, whether you're in, you know, Friday, Friday's expiration or April makes a big difference. So you'll have to handle that as you see fit. 
All I'm saying is I think uh, 405 given the put wall and this is the measured move target off of this bear flag. I think that's uh, a perfectly good objective place to look for a bounce. Q's bear flag measured move is way down here in the 310 area. We do have a gap to fill down to 300. If we somehow made it to 300 in the next day or so, you know, come down here. Maybe there's a little support here. Maybe there's a little support at 310. But if we were to fill this gap down to 300, I would definitely be looking to uh, cover some shorts at that point and expect a bounce. IWM, uh, pre-market, we are down here at 187.5 which puts us back at the uh, uh, January low. So any move lower than 187.50 is going to open the door to more selling. And as we discussed yesterday, that once you break that level, that opens up 170 on the chart on the weekly. Now, it's not going to go to 170 on its own. That would most likely need SPY and QQQ to continue its sell-off. So if you're short IWM and you see the Qs start to bounce, you know, IWM is probably going to bounce right along with it. And again, time frame is everything. If you had taken a view that uh, IWM is heading lower and you're like out in April, I really, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even touch it because uh, I think we're going to have further selling even after this initial wave as people, you know, throw in the towel. And don't forget, we've also got Jerome Powell in the middle of March with an FOMC announcement. Facebook, I think you can be short against 200, looking for 182.50. I think uh, down here at that level would probably be a level where uh, it might hesitate, might find some support there. But if the queues are selling off, Facebook's going to go right along with it. Now, I looked pre-market on Apple. We are already down into this 154 area where the 200 and this uptrend line come into play. So that's going to be a major, major test for Apple, whether it can hold uh, this 200 level and uh, if you weren't in it and you see, you know, 150 and a half break right here, then I think a longer term view is to expect lower prices. I, I kind of expect unless there's some kind of capitulation sell off that Apple would either hold or put in some kind of a bounce right here at the 200. I was surprised to see it, um, you know, down there uh, already this morning. I think it's off five and a half dollars. So watch that one. Even if you're not trading it, watch it as a market barometer, because if they're going after Apple, they're going to be going after everything. Uh, Tesla, I would just keep in focus. These levels that we identified last night, 725, 700, and then 640 is going to be a big level down here on the chart where the large volume over price bar is at. I would expect that would be a place where uh, selling would subside or to expect a bounce. Microsoft, 
uh, already trading this morning at 270. If things don't stabilize, I would expect uh, low 260s down around 262 and a half is that next level of support as long as it's below 272 and a half. So uh, this one too uh, is going to be coming in to a level that I would expect at least an initial bounce of some degree. So watch 262.50. Amazon, we're in this big gap. I think this is going to go down to that uh, 27.75 area. Uh, go ahead and fill that gap and then test these uh, January lows. And then, of course, if uh, we break that level, then we're going to be in a whole new regime after breaking this $600 trading range. It really opens up a technical target down to $2,300. Google, uh, I'm sure we're going to be opening down in this you know, $2,450, $2,475 range. A big level is 2350. I would expect that to be a level where uh, that first wave of selling would likely abate. So, uh, but that's, you know, that's $200 from here, it looks like 2550 to 2350. So uh, that's quite a ways. You've got an intermediate level down here, $100 lower at 24.50 that would take out the January lows and open up the door to more selling as we discussed last night on the I'm gonna actually had the weekly chart there let's go back to the daily um, 350 is a big level on the chart sorry about that it was the right chart large volume over price bar at 350 you break 350, I have an intermediate level here at this low at 300, but then I think it's going to make a round trip before it's all said and done back here to 260 where it started its run. So below 350, I think you can be short looking for 300 and then 260 out in time. Semiconductors. This 248 level is going to be really important. That marks the January low. It also aligns well with these uh, prior lows. You drop below 248. I see price coming in to 240 for a measured move target. And uh, that that is going to be a big important level uh, to hold. Otherwise, 225 becomes your target on a break below 240. ARC, just the weekly charts here. Uh, ARC FinTech, my target is 25, back to where it broke out. ARC G, 35. On the original breakout, making a round trip, measured move target down here. Arc K that holds a lot of Tesla. My technical target is 52.50, where it broke out. And wrapping up with Arc W, I'm looking for uh, 70. So round trips on all of the Arc stuff. And uh, those round trip levels to where the breakout would be, if somehow, not a prediction, but if somehow price breaks below that breakout level, that's, that's pretty bearish because uh, that would basically mean 
that this whole thing was a fake breakout and then you're back below and you're starting to eat into all these people that may actually still be holding ARC, you know, thinking it's going to come back, it's going to come back, it's going to come back. And then when they start realizing that now they're underwater, you may see redemptions pile in to the ARC names if, you know, we truly go into a, a full-fledged bear market where none of that stuff is really going to work. There'll be no appetite to buy. It'll go. <coughs> it'll go no bid, and then uh, price will just collapse. And if she has to do redemptions with those illiquid names, it will accelerate the process. But first things first, come down here, test those breakout areas, and then we'll have to uh, see what happens. So if you're new here, I hope you appreciated the video. Uh, each and every morning, I set the team up with objective trading levels where you can spend the majority of your time just working on your execution. I take pride in placing those levels at very important technical places on the charts and that over time, when you do in fact use them, trust them, find them to work really, really well, then uh, you're halfway home on your trading success. Having the levels is the first step. Being able to execute is the second step. So in, in speaking about execution today, go to the blog site, review those seven pointers that I gave you there. Keep them at the forefront today. Minimize your distractions. Be ready for anything, and uh, I think the day will turn out fine. Um, I will keep you posted on any developments. So hit the subscribe button, hit the alarm bell, hit the like button for me, pass the link along to others in your trading group, uh, help me grow the channel, help others benefit from the work. I'd really appreciate that. And then jump over in the show notes. There's a place to register for all my content with just your email. It takes 15 seconds. Then you'll get all my midday notes, morning, noon, or night, right in your inbox. You won't have to go hunting for them. And if you made a million dollars on these trade ideas, and I know a lot of you, maybe not to that level, but I know a lot of you, if you've been using these levels, you should be doing really, really well there's a link in the show notes to buy me a coffee, help support the channel, help support the work. Uh, I would really, really appreciate that. So let's wrap it up there. Let's see how we open and proceed through the day. I will certainly keep you posted of my observations. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.